Although the Northwest is rich in history, people often drive past landmarks without a second glance. But when Elaine Murphy saw a sign for Oregon's oldest tavern, she just couldn't pass it by. Oregon in 1860, this road was big news. The first overland link between Portland and Sacramento. Stagecoaches raced the distance in only six days. And in between, establishments like the Wolf Creek Tavern sprang up. The tavern was an oasis in a dry, dusty trail, a place where drivers and horses were changed and the weary traveler could count on finding a good hot meal and a soft pillow to rest his head. Though the stagecoaches are long gone and I-5 has bypassed Wolf Creek, the tavern is still open to the tired, the hungry, and the just plain curious. Today, Wolf Creek Tavern is owned by the Oregon State Parks and Recreation Division but it has leased the inn to people who run it in the old tradition. It's kind of fun to have a look around the restored landmark, trying to imagine the days when stagecoach drivers propped their feet up on the hearth in the men's sitting room, and evenings when the women gathered for music and embroidery in the ladies' parlor. Though many of the rooms have been enlarged over the years, some remain in the same closet size they were in the 1880s. This room may not look like much, but it was here that author Jack London slept and worked on one of his short stories. Uh, if only the walls could talk. Can you imagine what kind of stories they would tell? Oh, we don't have to wish for such miracles as talking walls, and we still have people like the Dougals, who love to tell stories about the people, famous and not so famous, who slept in these beds. We ran into the Dougals in Beaverton, Oregon, where they have retired. But they once lived at Wolf Creek and gave the tavern a reputation for fine dining and hospitality. This is what Wolf Creek looked like when John Dougal purchased it in 1922. He was fresh out of the service and fell in love with the broken down relic. But it took the bachelor a year of running it alone before he finally gave in and asked for help. Well, I, I had trouble getting a chambermaid. So after I'd been running it for a year, why I went to Portland and got her married her and brought her As back. I told you, I, I always tell him he needed a chambermaid. That's the only reason he married me. <laughs> <laughs> As for the famous people who visited the Dougals at Wolf Creek Tavern, well, when John was young, he babysat movie actress Carol Lombard and loves to tell the story. She came to visit me with her husband, Clark Gable. And uh, uh, that one reason was that uh, when the wife and I went on our honeymoon, we stopped with them when they lived in, where they lived in Hollywood, so she wanted to return the visit to Wolf Creek. But it wasn't only movie stars that took repast at the inn. Well, Herbert Hoover came to, to look at some gold mines, and then he found out that uh, it wasn't far from Rogue River, where steelhead fishing would be very good. So uh, after he went to the gold mines that I had directed him to, why, he said, well, now I've seen all I want to see. Let's go fishing. So I took him down to Everett and Riffle on the Rogue River to Did catch, catch anything. We caught lots of fish. In, at, uh, Wolf Creek entertained many visitors. It was right on the main highway and just about a full day's travel from Portland. But the Dougals say when they first bought the place, there was no such thing as a no vacancy sign. When we first took over the tavern, uh, the people who had been accustomed to staying there uh, wouldn't uh, come in and say they wanted to register for a room. They'd look on the mantel and see if there was any candles that sticks up there. And uh, if there was a candlestick there, they knew there was a vacant room. So they'd take the candle and go upstairs and knock on uh, all the room doors until they found one that they didn't get an answer, and then they'd go in and stay all night. <laughs> Did they ever walk in on you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Under the Dougal's management, Wolf Creek became so popular that in 1927, John had to add an extra wing. The tavern began to have an expanded role, not just as a wayside inn, but in the days when pilots first started speeding mail service by air, this became an official weather station. And since Wolf Creek Tavern had the only phone in the area, the state police used it as their wayside exchange, a place where they could receive orders and relay reports. Wolf Creek also meant a lot to big business. It was here that Isidore Zellerback held his company's secret board meetings because he could rent the entire inn and no company spies could eavesdrop. But of all the stories the Dougals tell, perhaps this is the most surprising. There was never any liquor 
sold in the Wolf Creek Tavern. The person who uh, uh, established religion in the area, and uh, th this church at Golden uh, and so forth, uh, put it in the, in the deed that if any liquor was ever sold there, it would revert to the previous owner. When is a tavern not a tavern? When it's Wolf Creek. Stagecoach Inn, Weather Station, Police Exchange, Home of Hospitality, and part of Oregon's history. Ronnie Lane tells us that the people in Wolf Creek, Oregon, extended some of that old-fashioned hospitality to the Faces and Places group. Sounds like she had a great time down there. And in case you're wondering where Wolf Creek is located, it's in southern Oregon, just north of Grants Pass. Next up on Faces and Places, Mary will tell us about some helpful inventions.